Hello everybody, I hope everything is going well. Now we will move to another part in our syllabus. We will start to talk about the different market structure, about the different structures in which different industries operate. Because actually, if we look to real economy, we will find that different industries are working in different competition environments, in different market structures. In this chapter, or in this lecture, we are going to start with the optimal case of competition, which is known as perfect competition. The overview of this lecture. First, we are going to differentiate between different market structures. Then, we are going to focus on perfect competition. Firstly, demand and revenue in perfect competition. Then, short-run equilibrium in perfect competition long run equilibrium in perfect competition and finally we are going to talk about shutdown and exit decisions in perfect competition so let's start by differentiating between different market structures in the real world firms operate differently depending on their market structures as we noticed before industries are divided into four market structures according to what according to the degree of competition between different firms number one perfect competition number two monopoly number three monopolistic competition and finally number four oligopoly now we have the next table. The next table will show us the different characteristics of different market structures. Here we have five columns. Column number one, the criteria of comparison. Then we have perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and finally monopoly. Now, criterion number one, number of sellers, perfect competition. We are talking about a market like what like agricultural products so for example tomatoes we can observe that there are large number of sellers and large number of buyers in the market for tomatoes so all buyers are knowing that all sellers will sell with the same price why they will sell with the same price because actually whenever one of the sellers change the price or for example raises the price the buyers will shift, the buyers will move to another seller and so on. Why? Because all tomatoes are identical. So, number one, what about the number of sellers in this market? The number of sellers in perfect competition are very large, huge number of sellers. Low barriers to entry, all those who want to enter the market can enter the market. And all those who want to exit the market at any time can exit the market. What about the nature of the product? Yes, the nature of the product, the product is identical. Tomatoes, all tomatoes sold by all sellers are identical, are homogeneous. What about elasticity of demand? In this case, tomatoes, for example, are perfect substitutes to each other. So we have perfectly elastic demand. What about the pricing power? Of course, the sellers in perfect competition are price takers. They take the market price as it is and they cannot influence the market price so they are price takers for example agricultural products then we turn to the extreme case of perfect competition which is monopoly what about monopoly mono in latin means one mono in latin means one so here we are talking about just one seller for the product the product has no close substitutes so this product is unique with no close substitutes for example we are talking about electricity distribution we have here in egypt just one company the egyptian holding company for electricity this company is responsible for distributing electricity all over the country another example is what the fixed telephone lines we have eg telecom eg telecom is responsible telecom egypt is responsible for what is responsible for providing that the fixed telephone 
lines then here the barriers to entry are very high it's very difficult for any potential producer to enter this market why because the monopolist is already setting very high barriers through the very low price and the, the low cost at which this monopolist is producing so actually this market is so difficult for any new producer to enter what about elasticity of demand of course highly inelastic demand the pricing power in this case the producers are price makers they make the price observe the difference between perfect competition where producers are price takers and monopoly where producers are what are price makers they largely influence they significantly influence the market price and finally some examples like what public utilities or life-saving medicines now we turn to the two intermediary cases between perfect competition and monopoly first we are talking about monopolistic competition for example we are talking about restaurants now can you observe how many pizza restaurants are in Egypt actually we have thousands of pizza restaurants but we cannot say that all these restaurants are offering the same quality and same price for pizza so we have different pizza restaurants a large number of pizza restaurants but they are not offering identical products they are offering what differentiated products either by quality features or marketing what about the number of sellers of course large like perfect competition but smaller than the number of perfect competition sellers barriers to entry low barriers to entry what about elasticity of demand relatively elastic because we have different substitutes for the product what about the pricing power some pricing power since the producer is able to charge different price than any other producer or any other seller in the market and finally what about examples we have restaurants like pizza restaurants and we have also for example clothing stores finally we have the market structure known as oligopoly and the word oli means what in latin oli means few small number so we are talking about a market with few number of sellers for example cement industry where we have few number of sellers producing identical product which is cement since cement is a standardized product or we have also the cars market or the auto manufacturing firms we have a few number of large huge auto manufacturing firms all over the world in this case cars will be considered differentiated product so we have the high barriers to entry it's not easy for any firm to enter the market especially if you know that oligopoly is characterized by a number of sellers between two sellers to nine sellers not more than nine sellers so we have high barriers to entry it's not easy for any new firm to enter this market they are selling either identical or differentiated products as we observed before of course relatively inelastic demand and finally yes of course the seller the sellers will have some to significant pricing power so we can conclude in this table that as we move from perfect competition towards monopoly number of sellers is decreasing barriers to entry are increasing elasticity is decreasing the influence in on price is increasing so competition is decreasing so when we move from perfect competition to monopoly competition is falling now we are going to focus and concentrate on the ideal case which is perfect competition the first market structure perfect competition in case of perfect competition the competitive firms will face a horizontal perfectly elastic demand curve why since there are many sellers of identical product so all firms are price takers remember the example of tomatoes all tomato sellers are selling with the same 
price in this market so in this case we have the following market demand curve here the market demand curve is downward sloping the intersection of market demand curve with market supply curve results in what in market equilibrium price so for example this is the equilibrium price for tomatoes say it is five Egyptian pounds per kilogram of tomatoes then all firms are dictated this price which is for example five Egyptian pounds per, kilog per kilogram of tomatoes so here we have a horizontal demand line for all firms in the perfectly competitive markets so observe the difference between downward sloping market demand curve and the horizontal firm demand in all the firms regarding the perfect competition market so accordingly of course total revenue or total sales is equal to what the price per unit multiplied by the quantity sold average revenue equals what total revenue divided by the quantity sold P times Q divided by Q so we can here neglect Q is Q and have what and have P so average revenue is equal to the price per unit as long as all sellers are selling with the same price what about marginal revenue marginal revenue is the addition to total revenue due to selling one additional unit due to selling one extra unit so we can say that marginal revenue is the revenue from the last unit sold so it is equal to what change in total revenue divided by change in quantity sold since all firms in perfect competition are selling with the same price marginal revenue will usually equal to what equal to price just in this case in the case of perfect competition so for example we said before in the tomatoes example that the price per kilogram is five Egyptian pounds this means that each additional unit sold or each additional kilogram sold from tomatoes will result in a revenue of five Egyptian pounds for the firm so in this case marginal revenue is equal to the price equal to five Egyptian pounds per kilogram now we are going to focus and concentrate in a very important concept for perfect competition we are talking about equilibrium firstly what do we mean by equilibrium we mean by equilibrium the situation in which the producers are achieving the maximum profit so we mean by equilibrium that the firm is able to achieve its main objective because actually the main objective of any firm is what maximum profit but observe that we are differentiating between short run equilibrium and long run equilibrium why because we noticed in the last chapter that production and costs are related to the production time frame production and costs differ in the short run than the long run so the producer makes the decision of producing an additional unit by comparing its revenue which is the marginal revenue by its cost which is the marginal cost so here we are using what re what we referred to in our first lecture in this semester the marginal analysis in economics whenever we make an economic decision we are comparing marginal benefit with marginal cost here the producer is making the production decision so he is comparing what marginal revenue the production of one additional unit with its marginal cost of this unit so based on the marginal analysis of production a perfectly competitive firm will achieve equilibrium by producing the level of output at which the marginal equivalency condition is achieved so here we are talking about what the condition for maximum profit the condition for short run equilibrium which is marginal revenue equals marginal cost this means what that the revenue gained from the last unit sold is just equal to its cost so we can have three cases here in the short run case number one marginal revenue greater than marginal cost 
so of course the producer will increase production why because in this case adding an additional unit will add to revenue more than it adds to costs vice versa marginal revenue is less than marginal cost the producer will reduce production why adding an additional unit to production will add costs more than revenues and finally the optimal case will marginal revenue equal to marginal cost the producer will stop the producer will not increase or decrease production why the producer here achieves maximum profit and that's why this is the short run equilibrium condition but since marginal revenue is equal to price in case of perfect competition then at equilibrium price is equal to marginal revenue equal to marginal cost this equilibrium condition will be just achieved in case of perfect competition not in any other market structure why because with competition the price is equal to what the price is equal to marginal revenue since all sellers are selling with the same price here you can remember the tomatoes example But for equilibrium in the short run, we will have three cases. The producer will maximize profit in the short run by producing at the level of production where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, as we concluded in the previous uh, slide. Given that profit, what is profit? Profit is equal to the difference between total revenue and total cost. Total revenue is price times quantity sold. What about total cost? Total cost is average total cost times quantity. Of course, average total cost is the cost per unit. So total cost is equal to average total cost or cost per unit times the quantity sold. In this way, profit will depend on what? The relation between price and average total cost. Here, we can say that average total cost includes the economic costs so we should differentiate between the economic costs and the accounting costs in economics costs are the opportunity costs of production I mean by the opportunity costs all costs either explicit or clear or implicit in accounting we are concerned only with explicit or clear costs the book costs the costs that we have actually incurred in production but in economics we are not just concerned with these accounting costs but also with what the opportunity cost of using the whole resources so for example instead of investing my money in a certain project I can deposit my money in a saving account in the bank so in economics here we are not just measuring the cost of using these resources or this money in the pr in the production but we are also using we are measuring the interest rate that could have been earned from the saving account. So actually, economic costs are inclusive compared to accounting costs. Economic costs are clear costs or accounting costs plus other implicit costs. In the short run, the producer will either achieve equilibrium with economic profit. Here I mean by economic profit that total revenue exceeds economic costs so price is greater than average total costs or case number two economic loss total revenue is less than economic costs so price is smaller than average total cost or case number three normal profit here total revenue is just equal to economic costs price is equal to average total costs so we can say in this case that the producer is just covering the opportunity costs of production so now we can move to one of these cases for example the first case the case of economic profit and we can illustrate this case using the following figure
here as you can observe in this graph we have marginal costs we have average cost average total cost what about the price where is the price here is the price so for example the market price and of course the firm price is ten dollars per unit so we can say that the point of intersection of marginal costs with price the green line is this point this point is a point of equilibrium this point is the point that will determine both the equilibrium price as well as the equilibrium quantity as we will see now so at this point the marginal equivalency condition is achieved price is equal to marginal revenue and also equal to marginal cost so now we can determine the quantity of equilibrium at this point of intersection here the quantity of equilibrium is 1000 units what about the firm in this case the firm is achieving what the firm in this case is achieving economic profit why because here we can see this red line this red line refers to what this red line refers to average total cost of producing this amount of production how we can get this average total cost we move from the quantity produced till we reach what till we reach average total cost here we can determine average total cost equals for example eight dollars so the price per unit is ten dollars the cost per unit is eight dollars so of course this firm will achieve a profit per unit of two dollars so now we can calculate the economic profit in this case at the area of this rectangle the area of this green shaded rectangle which is equal to what length times width is equal to 1000 times 2 or in other case we can get it in this way profit equals what price which is ten dollars minus average total cost eight dollars time is 1000 units equals two thousand dollars so this firm is achieving two dollars profit per unit time is the quantity produced at equilibrium 1000 units so total profit in this case is equal to what two thousand dollars so we can conclude that if the price is above average total cost at equilibrium if the price here is the price is above average total cost at equilibrium we can say that the firm will achieve a profit now what about long run equilibrium in the long run if the industry is perfectly competitive firms are not only price takers but there is also free entry so for example if a firm is achieving economic profit some new firms outside the market will start to think about entering the market and vice versa of course if there is economic loss some existing firms will think to go out to exit from the market therefore long-term adjustments will take place resulting in normal profit these adjustments include number one if there is already economic profit new firms will enter the market resulting in an increase in market supply firms will increase so the market supply will increase of course as a result of the increase in market supply the price will fall so the, the price starts to fall until a certain point at which price is equal to average total cost economic profits disappear and we reach normal profits. vice versa if there is economic loss in the market existing firms will exit the market resulting in a decrease in market supply and thus a rise in market price until what until the price is equal to average total cost and also economic loss disappears and also we reach what finally we reach the normal profit so by all means by all means the firm will reach normal profit will achieve normal profit in the long run 
here we have the case of what we have the case of the firms already achieving economic profits in this case new firms will enter the markets here we can say this arrow supply curve will increase supply shifts from s to s asterisk the red one so in this case the price will fall from pe to the new price which is pe asterisk now we turn to long run equilibrium in perfect competition and we found that by all means if the economy is achieving already economic profit the supply curve as we as we saw before will shift to the right the market price will fall until we return back to what until we return back to pe asterisk which is the equilibrium at this case at normal profit here we can say at this point this point at the intersection of what marginal cost with price and with average total cost so price equal marginal cost equal average total cost here we can say that the economy has reached to its output level in the long run this output level in the long run is called the QL this output level in the long run is also the efficient output level why because the point of intersection of marginal cost and the average cost represents the minimum average total cost so at the same time the firm has reached its efficient scale of production that's why we can conclude that perfect competition is optimal for any consumer why it is optimal for any consumer because it results in a lower price and a higher quantity of production in the long run which is the efficient scale of production so by all means we can conclude that the firm will reach what the firm will reach normal profit in the long run where price is equal to marginal cost equal to average total cost with no economic profit or economic loss of course vice versa in case of economic loss we will have the opposite of this graph the opposite of this case in this case the price instead of falling the price will start to rise and until we reach in the long run the normal profit situation so new firms will enter the market in this case until long run equilibrium is achieved at the efficient production scale QL where price is equal to marginal cost and equal to average total cost finally we reach to a very important point which is the difference between shutdown decisions in the short run and the exit decisions in the long run yes sometime the firm surprisingly the firm continues to operate in the short run with losses yes although the firm is achieving losses in the short run the firm can continue to produce why to minimize its losses to avoid a higher loss if it decided to close if it decided to shut down in the short run so a profit maximizing firm should continue to operate should continue to produce and sustain longer short run losses if its operating loss is less than its fixed costs so for example the firm will continue to operate if its price is four dollars where average total cost is five dollars average variable cost is three dollars this can be this example can be illustrated using the next figure here in this graph we see the following we see that the price the equilibrium price for the firm is four dollars the quantity of equilibrium where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost equal to price at this point the quantity for example is 100 units while 
average total cost in this case for this amount of production is five dollars so we have the price per unit produced price per unit produce is four dollars cost per unit produce is five dollars so in this case if this firm continues to operate it will have a loss of one dollar per unit produced so we can say that in total it will have a loss of hundred dollars as you can see from this calculation if the firm continues to operate loss equals what 4 minus 5 times 100 which is equal to 100 dollar so if the firm continues it will lose 100 dollars but here we can observe what here we can observe the minimum average variable cost The minimum average variable cost in this case is equal to three dollars so if the firm decides to shut down the firm will have a loss equal to what total fixed cost because the firm should pay all its fixed cost even if the firm shuts down so in this case total fixed cost equals what quantity times average fixed cost 100 the quantity produced times 5 which is average total cost minus 3 which is average variable cost so we have average fixed cost two dollars fixed cost per unit is two dollars times 100 equals a loss of 200 so if the firm continues to operate it will have a loss of 100 dollars and if this it decides to shut down it will have a loss of 200 of course the better decision is to continue to operate why to minimize loss loss from continuing to operate loss from shutting down two hundred dollars so we can conclude that we have a shutdown decision rule in the short run a firm should shut down when price is less than minimum average variable cost a firm will continue to operate as long as price is greater than or equal minimum average variable cost so in the long run and the other side in the long run the firm should exit the market if the price is not covering average total cost that is if total revenue is not covering total cost indicating that the firm is incurring loss in the long run so here we should differentiate between short run shutdown decisions and long run exit decisions short run, short run shutdown decisions we are comparing price with minimum average variable cost as long as price is equal to or higher than minimum average variable cost the firm will not shut down the firm will continue what about the long run in the long run the firm should cover all its costs the firm should cover all its costs which means that the price should be higher than or at least equal to average total cost so the firm will shut will, sh will exit the market if the price is not covering average total cost in the long run this is the main point here that we should differentiate between short town short run shutting decisions and long run exiting decisions thus the firm exits in the long run only if price is smaller than average total costs. Thanks 